one great shooter to this club, Wilbur Holland. He is an assistant coach with his staff. You're looking at the lineups. Joe Gashu is ready to go, looks over and says, are you ready on television? And CBS thanks him for that, and we're about ready to go. In red, the Chicago Bulls. The NBA on CBS coming your way from Detroit. That's Holland. Eric Money. Gus Girard, formerly in the ABA. Girard following. Money. Money averaging 17 and a half. Gets two, and it's now five to nothing as the Pistons lead the Chicago Bulls. And free agent here. Nine and a half minutes to go, five to four. Detroit leading, and Lanier. <laughs> Bob Lanier. Two turnovers now against Chicago. None so far for Detroit. Bob Lanier. Lanier has ripped off seven points. He's outscored Gilmore seven to nothing, and it is 11 to six. The team in red. That, of course, is the Chicago Bulls. That's Holland paired him against Money, and Holland dropping off. They find the open man six on the timer. Chris Ford. Chris Ford puts in that set shot. Uh, it, it's interesting. Here's a player who, at certain nights, he, he can hit 10 or 12 in a row, and other nights he just cannot put the ball in. He's one of the few players in the game today that still shoots a set shot. They are posting Marlowe and bringing May out. He's got a good shot outside. Mickey Johnson feeding Gilmore, and there the basket counts, and he's fouled in the active shooting. 60 minutes and 15 seconds to go with the NBA on CBS in Michigan, right here in Detroit. That's Eric Money. It counts and he's fouled by Holland as Wilbur Holland cracked him on the arm. But here you can see Detroit just clearing out the side for Money. All the other players on the other side of the court, and they let him work. And he possible gets three out of it. Of course, he's a fine one-on-one -on -one player, and he has the ability to get the shot off in traffic. Not only on little guys, but on big guys. Eric, Mickey Johnson coming outside. Gilmore now up against Lanier at the high post. They have posted Scott May inside against Ford. He got a mismatch and scored. And Johnson, Van Leer, Mengel. Almost traveled with that left foot. He almost carried it. Nine seconds to shoot. Eight, Mengel has it blocked by Lanier. Picked off by Scott May. Four seconds to shoot. They're going to have to hurry. It'll go now to Detroit. Eric, Eric Money. 21 to 15, Detroit with the lead. That's Schumann again posting Johnson. Gerard spinning around Scott May. Air ball. Van Leer. Storm and Norman, they call him. Van Leer had a super game against Milwaukee. That pass was blocked and taken away. Gus Gerard. A lot of action as Gerard runs smack into Mengelt, who wanted to get the offensive foul, but there's no whistle. Megan by three second violation against Detroit. Mengelt. Almost draws rain. So the lead down to six points as the Chicago Bulls are battling against the Pistons. Gerard with great second effort. And Chicago has come back. They have cut the gap from eight points. They've brought it back now to within four. Scott May over to Mengeld. He'll go to the hoop. He smells it. The grabbing it off. Rookie who comes in for the first time in the game. Tate Armstrong, number 14. That's Eric Money. Money's up against Gilmore. Eric Money, high man in the first quarter with 10 points, now has 12. Trying to maneuver the ball now, was just brought back to this club. Spon Dexter, who is inside very tough. That's Armstrong, the rookie. So inside, they have given Cliff Pondexter the chance to do something in the middle. As they are taking the two starting centers out of the game, and it's Douglas against Pondexter. That's good. Skinner's may makes that type of shot quite often. He's not getting a lot of playing time for this club. When he comes in, he's trying to advance the ball as much as possible, but they're going to clear the lane and let him go one-on-one -on -one now and then. Formerly with the Nets and outside with the rainbow shot. John Mengel now has eight points, and the action is picking up. It's 31 to 29. And here's Detroit back. This is the kind of a ball game that Eric Money loves. A lot of action, a lot of wide open backyard basketball. Now Mengel bringing up. He's got a four on two momentarily. Now it's cut down to a three on three. Great block by Gerard. Got a little bit of game got a little sloppy right there. Uh, players taking some four shots as you see Money coming into the lane there. And that also was not really a good shot, but it's a type of shot that Eric Money is accustomed to taking and oftentimes hitting. 
Pondexter got the rebound, and again, Mengel. He seems to have found a spot on the court, a la a former man who was tough in that corner, John McLaughlin. Jerry, you cannot allow John Mengel to put that shot up. You know, he wants the ball, he wants to shoot it, and when he smells it, he can fill it up very quickly. They the must play time, up on him and force him to the basket. Excuse for the me, second Jerry. time, John, this ball game is tied up. An offensive foul against Al Skinner. Mengel's all right. He's stunned, but he's all right. I think he's all right. It's amazing this doesn't happen more often, and you can see it here. Skinner waves his elbows around, and Mengel playing right up on him got hit. He's played in a lot of games, 545 straight over an eight-year period. Never missed a pro game. That's amazing. That's a great tribute to a man who plays when there are those nagging injuries. That's the rookie, Ted Armstrong, <laughs> making quite a move to the basket. Neither team has a team foul with a 33-31 lead for the club with the ball. That's Chicago. Lanier found him inside. Oh. Armstrong has gone inside. Woo. He's really shown some aggressiveness. He's come off the bench and given his club six points, John McLaughlin. He's made two baskets right in, in uh, Bob Lanier's face. And let me tell you something, from where Armstrong's shooting it from, I'm not sure he can even see the basket when Bob Lanier's in front of him. Comes money. And Al Carr has it taken away from him before it gets there by Norm Van Leer. Back to Landsberger. He looks like a linebacker. That was a nice play by Norm Van Leer. And of course, he anticipates so well, he's capable of stealing the ball at any time. And the number one draft choice is coming along very well, John McLaughlin. Jerry, he's having, he's having perhaps one of his better games. He has 10 points in the game so far. And the Bulls have been concerned with him. He's not overly strong. He's been on a weight program. Here you can see, oh, missed by the Pistons. Leon Douglas can't believe that he missed it. Here's Armstrong again. Armstrong, Armstrong. has ripped off 12 points coming off the bench. He hit a 16-foot right-handed jumper while we were away. He has sparked his ball club into the lead. They now have an 11-point lead. 43 to 4. His club is down by 9. He's paired against Van Leer. Look at Van Leer try and drop off and help out against Lanier. A soft touch by Ralph Simpson. He hasn't played much at all lately. With 341 seconds left to go in the second quarter, it is 43 to 36. Picked up and in on the left side, that was Leon Douglas. So right now, Detroit has gone with a double pivot situation, actually, a high-low pivot, if you will, with Leon Douglas and Bob Lanier. Trying to do something outside. Landsberger shows you he's big, but he shows you some talent out there. That really was a forced shot that went down for Landsberger, and I'm sure had he missed that, Badger would have been a little upset with him. Now, the Pistons going with this double pivot, they do it quite often. Leon Douglas has done a fine job for the Pistons this year. You must keep him off the boards. He is not a good shooter, but he will go to the basket. Ralph Simpson, the forgotten man. Ralph Simpson, the forgotten man, had played in only 8 of 15 games since Bob Kaufman returned as the coach here. That was Van Leer with his penetration, his first two points of the ball game. They're going to have to get some more points out of Van Leer. And now Simpson, he can shoot that outside jump shot in the ABA. He was great at shooting the three-point shot. And you can see Douglas here once again turning, going into the basket, putting the pressure on the defensive player and drawing the foul. John, I have to say it. That's a mismatch underneath with Douglas going against Johnson. Their bench afternoon. Some Thing they're going to have to do to get in the playoff. There's the outlet pass inside on the penetration. Scott May missed the shot. Douglas all alone. Down to Gus Girard. This will bring the ball game up to within two. And now the Pistons come bouncing back. The Detroit fans are hollering as Gus Girard makes it a two-point ball game. This has been the battle of the substitutes this afternoon. And of course, that's the strength of any good ball club. Not just five or six men. they got to come in off the bench now and then. Scott May. Ten points for Scott May. 49 to 45. That's Simpson. Now Bob Lanier. Lanier showing you how tough he is outside. Guess that right arm is not bothering you. 49 to 47. The visitors leading Chicago. These teams have met eight times. And neither team has won by more than eight in the last eight games. As John Mengelt shows you some outside ability, John McLaughlin. Now Norm Van Leer starting something outside, calling out a play. They're going to try and go inside if they can. They are really dropping off on Landsberger. Douglas playing what looks like almost uh, right behind Lanier, trying to help out. Which showing they have some ability. They have started a love affair back in Chicago 
with their fans. No doubt about it. They went bananas Friday night. Well, those fans are really a factor in their home games, that's for sure. Here you see Norm Van Leer penetrating again, but Gilmore getting the basket that may have missed. Well, Norm Van Leer along with on the back line, Wilbur Holland. He came out of the game, the man with the ball, earlier with three fouls. That's been a big factor. Big factor early in the game. Scott May showing versatility outside. I'll go 11 minutes to go the third quarter on Super Bowl Sunday, but this is the NBA on CBS. A good pick on that play. Ford with that good push shot outside is a smart player. Not too smart on that one, though. He couldn't find the handle, and Wilbur <laughs> Holland steals it away. Here's Holland over to Scott May. Now, the Bull, on the other hand, I'm sure they're going to continue to run when they have the break, but still, they run their set offense very well. Woo! The lead of 12 for the surprising Chicago Bulls. Outside, showing he has some muscle there. Chris Ford has rammed home three field goals in a row in the third quarter. He's got eight points. Well, we told you in the game, Detroit in the last six games has had a frightful time with turnovers. They have been, well, they've been averaging 26 and a half. That's hurt them. From the team from Windy City, Chicago up against Detroit. Ford for Detroit goes over Holland. Johnson already on the year. What a year of improvement it's been for him. Ford saves it over to Gerard. In there a long time, no whistle to the rebound. Out of Detroit, trying to cut the gap down to 10 again. Eric Money with it. Detroit led in the first quarter by eight. Then it was tied. That's Lanier making his move. Fouled in the act of shooting the basket count. That's the man they've got to go to. Now it is cut down 69-64. Van Leer driving and scoring with a good move. Van Leer driving and looking to the hoop for the first time, really. Five minutes in the third period. That's Gerard. Now Lansberger outside, feeding the big guy, pushed from behind. No whistle on the play. Look at him back in. Good shot by Gilmore. It's just part of the game. You play so many nights that it has to be done. 75-67 is the score. With the ball, Chicago has the lead. Stolen away by Ford. He knocks it away to Carr. Carr brings it in tight, and going for two is Gus Gerard. So Ford got a piece of it. He's the eighth steel man in the NBA, and you just saw there why he's not too flashy, but he gets the job done. And starting, they're starting to run. They're running much better the second half. The lead is six. That's Gilmore forcing the shot a little. Landsberger really hustling for the rebound. Bob Lanier of Detroit. Here come the Pistons. They're down 75 to 69. Eric Money looking inside, trying to find Lanier. Gerard goes in the hole. Lanier goes. He's gone. 18 for the big guy. 18 in the NBA on CBS. Sending it to you from Detroit. Here comes Detroit. Gerard missing. Of course, tighten up the defense. It is now 76 to 74. <laughs> Gus Gerard has just made two from the foul line. It's a one point lead. 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. 78 to 77. As the visiting team, the Chicago Bulls have it. That's Bob Lanier jumping into the lap of Gilmore. Gerard scores. He was fouled in the act of shooting. Lead the Detroit Pistons. Tate Armstrong, a rookie, starting on the back line. That's Mickey Johnson. Rebounded underneath by Gus Gerard. Now Chris Ford brings it up. Ford looking at a three-on-three -three situation. He's going to hold it up. No, he's not. He's going to take the shot. Gus Gerard and Chris Ford have helped bring him back. Gerasso pumped in six points in that quarter. They have really brought their team back. Gilmore making a good move on Lanier. Spun away from him. Gilmore with 13 points. Ford with six seconds on the timer. Looks up at the clock. Gets it into Lanier. He's leaning perfectly for the pass. Well, he's not up against ML Carr. Now he's up against Gus Gerard. That's Mengel. Ford with the rebound. Ten and a half minutes to go in the game. 83 to 80. Detroit with the lead. Carr going over to Girard against Weatherspoon. It's short. Men guilt with the rebound, and here comes Chicago. 8.55 to go. They fixed the scoreboard clock. 84 to 83. The team in the lead is the team with the basketball. Artis Gilmore against Leon Douglas. Takes him into and out of his sneakers. Tate Arms kid who has a new pro high today will be the man who will inbound it. Boy, this has to make the hearts of Lester Crown and Arthur Wirtz happy back in Chicago watching their number one draft choice do the job. That's the kid with the ball. Bingo! He's got another oh. one. And he's fouled in the act of shooting or else a foul <laughs> on the pick, one or the other. 18 points for Tate Armstrong. Well, 
Chapman, a graduate of Duke, drafted number one by Chicago, has helped the Bulls this afternoon. They lead by five. Douglas really moves and goes to the right hand. Leon Douglas now has nine points. One big men in the game. Let's see how they do it offensively. It is 90 to 85, the lead of five. Lanier is back in the game, really going at it underneath against Gilmore. Now it goes inside to Lanier. Watch the duel. Oh, what a great shooter for a big man. He sure is, Jerry. Going over to McHudson. Johnson up front against Leon Douglas. Now it's back to the rookie who's had a field day. He whacks another one in. So the young man has done his job. 20 points, a new professional high for Tate Armstrong. Got, they have gotten a lot normally from their starting five, accounting for 82% of the team's playing time. And 90% of the Chicago's minutes, but the bench has helped him here. Eric Money with a drive shot, and Money has rammed in 18. For Chicago, Detroit now trying to get back in the game scattering as the Bulls turn the ball over there. They may commit more fouls and put the Bulls on the line. ML Carr misses the dunk. Armstrong comes back with it. Three on two. Back over to the rookie. Block. Goal tending. Goal tending is called. To block the shot. That's Lanier going inside. Loses the ball. Gets it back over to Eric Money. I'm not sure that was a goal tend. I think perhaps the ball was still on the way up. Let's see what happens with Gilmore outside. Oh. Artis Gilmore measuring that one, averaging 23 a game. The big guy has 17. How he has improved this year. Tremendous improvement. The people in Chicago are extremely proud of their ball club this year. That is Chris Ford. Now, the, I'm sure they're going to have to start picking up a little higher to intensify their defense, and at times, perhaps double team to try to get Chicago to turn the ball over. Gilmore in the hole. Made a good move. Gilmore really asserting himself in this one. 19 points for the quiet man from Jacksonville. The big guys get so close to the basket, and they both have enough talent that if they get it inside, it is a pretty good percentage shot. An excellent foul because that's only the third. Now Van Leer trying to do something on defense, and Lanier with a double pump scores. And James, a big exchange for the Pistons. Eric Money won't miss shots like that too often. Now, the Bulls should set on the ball, use the clock as much as they can, which Norm Van Leer is very good at doing. All Lanier over. with a rebound. Lanier goes to Ford. He'll go in for two. So with a minute and 32 seconds to go, it is 104 to 97. The lead is seven. Still plenty of time. Not plenty of time, but still time. Well, I just mentioned Norm Van Leer is good at sitting on the ball, and he really is. Only that time, he going into the basket, of course, that left the, the other end wide open. And here the Pistons again make the Bulls turn the ball over and go down and score. This game is not over yet. Holland with a double team gets it away. Scott May, they're just going to try and eat the ball and draw the foul. May, everybody all over him. Six seconds, five. This one should belong to the Chicago Bulls. And the Chicago Bulls, with a second to go, have won the game. The Bulls have won three in a row, beating Los Angeles, Milwaukee, and now Detroit.